Hello crafty friend, it's me Justine. I hope you're doing well. I am well. Today I get to play with some mice and some Copic markers. So in this video today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to color house mouse cards. So let's just dive right in. I'm going to start with the die cutting process of this. So yes that would be a fabulous card. I do have a one card to show you where I just use this as a full panel. But on the one I'm doing on camera today, I wanted to be kind of fun and different. So I'm going to use this Essential Oval Die, which you see here is one of my favorites. I use it on a lot of cards. And I'm going to die cut out my little mouse stamped image and sentiment. And then I will get to coloring it. So I'm going to die cut this out. This is my next biggest one. I will use that in just a minute or two. But I'll run this through my platinum and we'll get to coloring. So it's a good day. House Mouse came out with new fresh designs for kind of winter, February, Valentine's Day. I'm loving them. Let's start with the first one. This is called Candy Hearts. It is so stinking cute. Here we have Mud Pie. If you don't know, there's a whole family of these little mice here. So there's Amanda, Monica, Mud Pie, Maxwell, and Muzzy. And they are just so stinking cute and they get into some little funny situations. This one, we have Mud Pie laying belly up with a whole bunch of hearts balancing on his nose. So adorable. Then we have this one, which is the I Love You, which is the We Heart You stamp. Oh, and by the way, this one comes with two sentiments, Happy Valentine's Day and I Heart You. So they're little there. And then this I Heart You one, which is called We Heart You, as two stamps as well. We have the big stamp with the mice, and then we have this one that says Thinking of You. You can kind of peek at it there. And the mice are holding up three lollipops that they have chewed to make a funny, sweet message, I heart you. And this is Mud Pie, Amanda, and Muzzy. Then we have this one, which I almost started crying looking at because it just reminds me of my grandma who sewed and crocheted and knit and I just felt like this was me and her. But it is in fact Amanda and Monica. So we have Amanda's just knitting up a storm. Monica's wrapped herself up in the little project there and they are just enjoying their time together, which I always enjoyed my time with my grandma. I was named after her, so she has a special, extra, extra special place in my heart. So we have this one called Knit One, which is funny because Knit One, Pearl One, little, <laughs> little pattern there anyway. This has three sentiments. So we have this one that says, you warm my heart, all you knit is love. And then we also have sending warm birthday wishes. So sorry, it's kind of awkward to read upside down and backwards, but there you have it. And then my last one, which is probably my arguably, I don't know, they're all really good. But this one reminds me of my grandma. This one reminds me of my husband, which I just, I love. But this is the one I'm going to color on camera today. And I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks about coloring these house, house mouse little friends. But this is Muzzy and Amanda. And they are cuddled up. It's called Snuggle Up for Stamps. So we have them snuggled up on a stump. We also have The Snuggle is Real as a sentiment. Sending hugs and miss you. So... Now that that's all die cut out and ready to go, I will just put this die back into its little nest. And I'm gonna keep this one out because I'm gonna need it to do a little background matting color. Okay, my first tip for coloring house mouse cards is to number one, look at this chart. I'm gonna pop it on the screen here. And I'm also going to bring it up on my camera here so I can see it as I reference it. And this is just perfect for coloring house mouse things because 
it definitely gives you a starting point for how to color with Copic markers the mice themselves so themselves so like I said each mouse has a name so if you look on the top left corner of this image we have Maxwell and it says there's three different colors for Maxwell it gives a little description of how he is but you can see there's a fur and skin for each mouse so there's three different Copic colors that are going to be perfect for adding color. Now, I am no expert on coloring, but I am trying. And what I will just tell you now is when you are coloring with Copics, it's always important to have those three colors. So you're gonna have a light, a medium, and a dark. And different people do it different ways. Some people start with coloring everything the light, going with the, with the dark, and then blending with the medium. Sometimes people start with the light to go to medium, then go to dark. It just kind of is your preference and it depends on what you're coloring. I kind of mix it up and I'm a little bit of an kind of erratic crafter and I just kind of do what I want. So I don't really have one specific method to my madness, but I do try to do my very best on my coloring. So looking at these here working with this stamp that i have it's muzzy and amanda so if you look at muzzy on the bottom it says for muzzy that we need w3 w5 w6 well if you know copic markers yeah they're expensive i have half of them now and i don't have w5 no w6 so what i do have is w1 three five and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change up the light dark me the light medium and dark so instead of having the w3 being my light it's going to be my medium and instead of w5 being my medium it's gonna be my dark now and then I'm gonna substitute the lightest one for my white for my light one will be the w1 so that we'll have light medium dark and i'm going to remember that with the numbers one three five as i go in order so from light to dark anyway you might be wondering about the tape on my markers the blue is just so i know that they're mine sometimes i craft with friends and bring copic markers and they have copic markers so i marked all of mine with this at least some of them i just got a skin tone pack and this one was from there so i haven't put my polka dots on there yet and then any marker that I find is that is super juicy, I put this big yellow strip around because I take off both caps, and I'll get to that in just a second too. But anyway, so those are my colors for Muzzy. And I'm gonna do this all on camera, so just bear with me, you're in here for a long video. So then for Amanda, I'm going to use two different markers. So it says for Amanda to use E53, E54, 35 and e57 well i don't have those so i'm just going to use two on amanda so i will have to do some blending there so i kind of did this so you can see the different ways so i'm going to do the light medium dark and then i'm going to show you how to do it with two for both of their noses i'm going to use r20 and then for the stump I'm going to use these three colors, E13, E31, E33. And there's not a lot of the stump showing, but I'm just gonna make it look like wood, basically. So let's start with Amanda. Muzzy, sorry. Muzzy on, Muzzy on the left. Okay, so like I said, I want the nose to be pink, so let's just start with that. And since I have my marker uncapped, I'll just do Amanda's nose too. Now I'm done with this one, hooray. So for this technique, I will do the three methods. So I'm gonna start with my lightest color, which is W1. And since her eye is closed, well, both of their eyes are closed, I am just going to put this all over her head, including her ears. like so then I'm going to use my darkest color for her which is the w5 
and I'm going to put that on spots by her fur that meet the light spots so I'm going to basically go around her little fur of the face frame so kind of like her hairline and I'm just going to use my marker and just kind of make dots this motion okay and go on the hairline just to give that a little bit of more dimension and definition. And then I'm going to go around to the back part where her head should be in the back. So that should be a little bit dark. And then also go back here like that. That's my dark. And then I'm going to next go with my medium. And remember this is my juicy marker. So sometimes Copic markers can be really juicy. I have not re-inked this one at all. But sometimes when it's so juicy, the juice or the, the, the juice, the ink just kind of comes out really fast. And my friend told me that if I take the top off up here, it somehow releases the pressure going on in there. So it does not leak everywhere onto my project. So I'm going to, of course, put the cap on when I'm done. But... It definitely does work so for this I'm going to go in the middle so close to where that dark was and just kind of pounce on the dark and the light just to kind of blend it a little bit and then by the ears I'm going to add it where there is the dark ink from the actual stamp with the medium color like so and one thing I do love about House Mouse is that their stamps are kind of shaded already, which is so nice because you just stamp it and give it a color. Okay, and then my next part is for Amanda. And like I said, I'm going to use the two color method. So I'm going to do light, dark, light. So for her, I'm using E51. And I'm going to go over her entire head and her ears. Now there is a little piece of this leaf in the middle of them. So I'm not going to color the leaf yet. There we go. And just get some color on her ear like that. Then with my E57, which is pretty dark, so don't be alarmed, it's light walnut. I'm going to go on just the shadow parts and around her face. And I'm going to put this all around the head part and then also a little in the ears just to darken it up a little bit. And it looks a little weird now, but trust the process, I'm gonna blend with the lighter color. E51. So we're just gonna blendy blendy. All right, crafty friend, it is December 10th. What are you thinking about for New Year's? I know that's a little bit of ways away, but I do like to have a resolution just kind of thinking about it in my mind. So it could be really anything. I think a resolution could be like a mental thing. It could be a physical thing that you do or a practice that you kind of obtain, but I'm curious. But as I'm blending here, I'm just gonna kind of think about maybe my resolution. So, new year, new you. <laughs> So far, everything is blending so nicely. So I'm very happy about that. Should we do a crafty resolution? How fun would that be? I don't know. I think that would be kind of neat. Oh yeah, the feet. Ha, huh, that rhymed. Anyway, <clears throat> I am going to use the same color for the skin that I used on the face for the tail and the feet. Just because they are kind of nice and light on this one and then on this one they're more of a, a warm or cool gray warm gray sorry um, I know mice are kind of like the pinky tones for their skin and they have a lot of the ease for the skin tone on the cheat sheet but 
I do like to have the mouse match the body. So the mouse feet and tail match the body. And I'm not certain, but I think this is the tail. On the first one that I colored, I colored it as the stump, but I think that is Muzzy's tail. So that is all set. So I'll put those off to the side and then let's color the stump. And for this, I am going to use some scrap paper. Or no, I'll use a stencil. No, I can't color. Clean that off. What am I thinking? Let's use a little bit of scrap paper. Got to have some around here somewhere. This is just a back of some old cardstock. So it's just nothing that I'm concerned about getting colored on. Okay, now once again, I have... E31, E33, and E13. So these are kind of like the earthy tones. So I'm going to just make this into a stump. And on this time, I'm going to show you the third technique. Ooh, I'm also going to use E57. So four colors. I'm going to go from dark to light on this one and just show you another kind of fun way to do this. So darkest one, E57. I'm going to put this on the parts where there is shadow underneath the mice. So there's already a lot of ink from the stamp on the very darkest parts, but I'm going to just kind of bring it to life with some of the E57. And I'm also going to go down some of the darker parts of the stump that are kind of like a crack in the stump. My husband's doing some yard work, so if you hear some thumping in the background, it is just just him. Luckily, we do have an older vehicle that he is going to be driving until we figure out all of the insurance drama mama with the whole car accident thing. Okay, then I'm going to take my next darkest color, which is E13, and I'm going to butt that up against my last color which is the last darker one, and just put that next to the dark. And this is going to be kind of making a gradient. And this is a stump, so there is not really a one perfect way to color it. So I'm just going to do my thing here and give it some color. Then we have E33. This one's called Sand, and that's going to go up next to my last color. And then I'm going to start doing some dragging motions down to kind of help the wood look like it has some wood grain in there. And I'm going to finish with the last color, which is E31. And then my stump will be finished. careful with that little tail there. There we go. Okay, now the first time I colored this card, I had the mice wrapped up in a yellow fall leaf, and I thought, why not do a red fall leaf? Because I think that I'd like this to kind of be bright. So I'm going to use, I think we'll use E59 and RB29 and let's do, let's do a yellow in there, yellow red. We'll do these three colors. Turn them around for you. There we go. Let's do another one. I'm just going to really play around with these markers here. And this is just my favorite method of Copic coloring is doing your own thing. So <laughs> when I first kind of was working on cards in the card world and learning things, I thought, oh, I have to do it all just, just like the people say and follow the examples. And then, then I started having fun and playing around doing my own thing, playing around, making mistakes, messing up. What? Yes, messing up. And just enjoying the process and using card making as a stress reliever. And I have never looked back. 
I just love it. And this is just kind of a way to do it. Add some color. Just have fun. I think I need a lighter red to go with this. We'll see. Trust the process. I know it looks a little stripey. <laughs> but I think the most important thing about crafting is not being afraid to make a mistake because sometimes the best cards kind of come from the mistakes you make and just kind of finding a way to make it work and just going with it. So I encourage you to play around. Maybe that will be your resolution to play in your craft room Maybe it's to shop your stash. I know that's something that I've been really trying to focus on with some of my videos and just kind of be present in my craft room and look at what I have before I start ordering a whole bunch of things. I know it's a little ironic because my next video is going to be a mini haul, but with Black Friday, I just, I ordered a few things, but they are consumables. So they are necessary for my, my card making. So that's how I justified that one. But we'll see, you can see what I, what I grabbed in a couple days. I was shocked at how fast it came to me because um, they had a little notice on their website, on the Spellbinders website that said, due to extreme high volumes expect shipping delays or something like that and I thought well I get it when I get it but it came pretty quick all the way from Arizona to me in Minnesota I'm thinking that this is probably going to be some kind of fun bright leaf I know I colored all that yellow and orange up but you can see it through the red so there we go, and then I'm going to take the last dark color called Cardinal, which is R59, and I'm going to put that on some of the darker spots that already have the ink. If you found this tutorial helpful at all, let me know by, by writing a comment and liking the video. It does help me reach more crafters, so I do appreciate that. Plus, I love talking with you. I comment to every comment that is left on my channel. So know that if you take your time to talk to me, I will talk to you. <laughs> and the best way for me to see your crafter, crafty creations is to join um, my Facebook group page called Spellbinder Maker Group. And that is all for making beautiful things with the Spellbinders products and also um, the better press situation. I love better pressing and foiling so I am an admin for the Foil Snobs Club and I am I'll have those all in the description. I think they're in almost every video's description but there we go. I was going to use this one for a nesting die for this, but I do have this red already die cut out that was sitting in my bin, and I think it matches really nicely. So I'm not even going to die cut another one. And then on the background, I just, I wanna foil, or I wanna add some dimension on the back of this one. So I'm going to use one of my absolute all-time favorite embossing folders, the Harvest Mushroom, the mush <laughs> the Mushroom Harvest which is almost wearing off. Yes, that was Sharpie. Can you believe that? Anyway, this is the beautiful mahogany paper from Spellbinders. I'm obsessed with this. This is also Spellbinders paper. I just can't remember the name, but I can, I can tell you it's Spellbinders paper because I just, I know. So for 3D embossing, I will just run this through my platinum. I do use water, so it helps my, um, image kind of come to life but I've been doing this new thing where I only add water to the back of the embossing folder so this is the top that says spellbinders 
Anyway, I spray the whole thing, or most of it, and then I take my rag and I just dry this part, and I'm finding that it gives a little better result. I know a lot of people wipe this with a baby wipe instead, but baby wipes are expensive, and I know that I will, um, fingers crossed, always have water <laughs> to use, so that's what I'm going with. All right, I'm going to run this through my platinum, and I'll be right back. I do love the universal plate system. I have that and it makes it so easy to use my 3D embossing folders because there's um, the plate D that just gives all the dimension. You know, it doesn't really show up too much, but there is like a little leaf and enough texture to make my heart happy. Okay. Next, I'll stick my layers on and I'll show you the rest of the cards that I've made. I think you're going to like them. I hope so anyway. And be on the lookout for a favorite, even though I don't know if I'm going to be able to have a favorite today. Oh, I forgot to gather the leaf in the back. Well, I can just add it right now. This part in the back really helps give the illusion that these two are wrapped up. I don't know why I just did that with my hand. Not even Italian. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I say that so endearingly, so please know that. Okay. How many times do I need to say okay? Oh, personal flaw. Maybe that will be another resolution. <laughs> Can't be too crazy with too many, but maybe I can stop saying okay. Next. Here is... <laughs> my other one that I made with the same stamp. You can see two different cards, two different results. I love the, st the stump on this one. It definitely has a woodland vibe. And then I have this one, which is the wrapped in love one. So cute. And I added on the bottom a sentiment from the All You Need Sentiment Pack, which is a glimmer set. That was a glimmer of the month for October. No, November. Not sure. If it's on the website, I will link it below. And then I made this one, which was just so cute. He's belly up with the little hearts. I just love it. And I also use the embossing folder of the month on the background of this card. If you're interested in seeing more embossing, I just put up a video, I think it's yesterday. When this video goes up, it will be yesterday on the embossing folders of the month. I kind of went crazy and did eight cards. So I hope you like it and let me know in the comments here which one is your favorite. The pink, the purple, the yellow leaf, or the red leaf. So let me know. Anyway, happy crafting and I hope you've enjoyed my little mini tutorial on Copic coloring with House Mouse. We'll see you next time, crafty friend. Bye-bye.